This lesson shows how to use FDisk to create the fundamentals of a disk layout with extended partitions and a swap file partition. Your Linux operating system will need a swap file to be able to run and the swap file is created in a partition of its own. Also, if you need to have a total of more than four partitions on a disk drive, you can do so by using an extended partition. To demonstrate how FDisk is used to do this, I'm once again going to use the floppy disk that has no file system on it to create a somewhat typical set of Linux partitions, although I'm just going to be modeling the layout on a floppy disk. The device node FD0 addresses the entire disk, so that's the one that's used on the command line of FDisk. As you can see, there are no partitions on this disk. Let's begin by creating a small primary partition on the first 10 cylinders. It's common for Linux installations these days to have a single small partition that holds nothing but the operating system. It's called the boot partition. This leaves 70 cylinders on the disk. An extended partition can be divided into a number of other partitions, so let's make the rest of the disk into a single extended partition, then divide it up the way we would like to. This is going to be an extended partition. We've already used partition 1, so let's use number 2. We want to fill up the rest of the drive, so let's just take the defaults of cylinders 11 through 80. Now the disk is all partitioned, but the purpose of an extended partition is to contain other partitions, so let's add a new one to the extended partition. Now it's asking whether we want to add a logical partition. A logical partition is a partition that goes inside the extended partition, and that's what we want to do, so we specify L. Here we are given the numbers of cylinders in the extended partition. Let's make our first logical partition take 11 through 50, leaving 30 cylinders unused. Notice that the extended partition, which is number 2, and the logical partition, which has been assigned the number 5, both start at the same location. That's because the logical partition is inside the extended partition, and we can put another one in there too. The new logical partition is number 6, and it's in the next 10 cylinders of the extended partition. But we still have some space left over. We can use the space to put in more logical partitions. There is seldom any need to break things up into very many partitions, but it is possible. Let's add one more partition as the swap partition. Now the entire disk is partitioned. But we want to make that last one, partition number 7, the swap partition. That's done by simply changing the partition type with a T command. The ID number of the Linux swap partition is 82. And now we have a layout of partitions on the floppy disk that's something like the layout you may want to use on your hard drive. It has a partition that can be used as a boot partition, some other partitions to be used for general purposes, and it has a swap partition. The whole thing is written to disk with a W command like this. It takes a second or two for a floppy disk to accept the partitions. Now let me use FDisk just to show you the layout of the hard drives on this machine. There are two of them, and they're IDE drives. The first one has a device node HDA and looks like this.
The one with the asterisk in the column is the boot partition. Notice that it's quite small. It only takes up a total of three cylinders. Of course, these cylinders are much larger than the ones on the floppy drive. The three cylinders provide 24 megabytes, plenty of space for a boot partition. The extended partition, HDA2, is divided into two logical partitions. Partition HDA5 contains the general file system, and HDA6 is the swap partition. Now, this is a very small swap partition. In fact, I made it a little too small, but that's the way I set things up here three years ago when I installed Linux. I'm going to fix that one of these days as soon as I can get around to it, but the system runs a bit slower than it should because of that. I don't want to change anything because it would destroy my data, so I just want to get out of here. I have a second IDE drive on this same system. Here's the petition table for it. It's just one large partition that's a standard Linux file system. This is just an old disk drive that I had laying around when I put this system together. I really need to upgrade this machine. Anyway, that should give you the fundamental information you need when you're partitioning your disk drive. In the upcoming lessons, we'll be looking into what needs to be done to create the file systems in the partitions and then have Linux mount those file systems when it boots. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you. There is a flag on disk that determines which partition is bootable, and you can toggle that flag on and off. Let me show you. There. That makes partition 1 the bootable partition.